Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Civil War Generals 2, uh, Grant, Lee, and Sherman. And in this video, we're going to be continuing our grand campaign as the Confederacy, and we have been given a choice. I put the question to you guys last time, uh, after the last video on where to proceed. Uh, we have won the Battle of Winchester. We have won it so decisively that as the Confederacy, we have the choice of our next battle. We can choose to fight the Battle of Cross Keys, which is an alternate, uh, which is the next historical battle at in the Shenandoah Valley with Stonewall Jackson. Cross Keys and the next day's battle at Port Republic decisively defeated two Union armies and freed Stonewall Jackson to join Robert E. Lee in the seven days battles before Richmond. Once again, the Confederates showed... Uh, how deft maneuvers and clever use of terrain could thwart a larger, better-equipped enemy. That's the historical battle. Uh, it is an alternate, so it probably gives us a slightly different starting point. But basically, the Battle of Cross Keys, uh, the next historical battle, and then potentially the Battle of Port Republic. I'm not sure if that's included or not. Uh, and then we'd go into the Seven Days Campaign. The alternate here that we've been given is the Battle of Harper's Ferry, early number one. So basically... We won at Winchester, we're going to continue up the valley, uh, and we're going to go for Harper's Ferry, which is right along the border of Maryland, right along the Shenandoah River, and directly threatening the capital at Washington. Harper's Ferry, early variant number one. This fictional battle at Harper's Ferry follows the Battle of Winchester. Stonewall Jackson, fresh from a major victory, chases the fleeing Federals to the town of Harper's Ferry. If Jackson can defeat the Union Army and take the town, he will strike a decisive blow to the morale of the North and panic Washington, causing McClellan's forces to be recalled back to D.C. So I think the way this is written is if we win decisively at the Battle of Harper's Ferry, we could cause the recall of McClellan out of the peninsula, which would prevent the Seven Days Battles from even being fought in this game. That's an aggressive, a bold move. Uh, historically, Jackson didn't move on Harper's Ferry. He didn't have the strength to move quite that far north. The Union did hold 30,000 troops back with General Ir Ir Irwin McDowell uh, in Washington to uh, counter the threat of Jackson, and they did not participate in the Seven Days Battles, much to General McClellan's um, chagrin. But it, it didn't pull back all the way as far as um, the entire army to Washington. Harper's Ferry could potentially do that. So, based off the feedback of all of you guys in the last video, you want to see the fictional Battle of Harper's Ferry. This is not to be confused with the Battle of Harper's Ferry in the Antietam campaign. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see. If we can win it, do we get to avoid the Seven Days Battles? Additionally, if we lose Harper's Ferry, I wonder if there's a question on if Jackson even gets deployed to the Seven Days, and could that hurt our chances there? It's a, I think it could be a bold but risky decision. could make the Seven Days much more difficult, but it could also... Uh, prevent us from taking all those casualties, and I'm assuming if we don't fight the Seven Days Battles, I'm assuming the regiments that would have been bloodied in the Seven Days may be stronger in other campaigns, but we'll see. All right, so a lot of promotions after the Battle of Winchester. A bunch of regimental commanders are promoted to Colonel and Lieutenant Colonel and Major. Uh, General uh, or Colonel D.A. Langhorn of Fulkerson's Brigade was also promoted to Brigadier General. Um, we've got uh, Thomas Stonewall Jackson is finally promoted up from, up from Colonel to Brigadier General, uh, which is a more appropriate rank for commanding the 1st Division. Uh, Richard Yule, who also apparently commands the 1st Division, is promoted to Major General, so it could be interesting. Will Richard Yule be a Corps commander before Stonewall Jackson? Um, I mean, it's certainly a possibility. Uh, meanwhile, not a lot of other changes or anything else like that uh, in this particular... Um, I mean, a lot of promotions, but not a ton, I guess, else... Worth calling out. Nobody wounded, nothing like that. So move into done, and we'll see here. We have 120,000 weapons uh, cost captured to re-equip our troops. Um, Jackson is a division commander. He's command of the 1st Division. I don't know where Richard... Oh, Richard Yule also commands... The, oh, so they command divisions in different corps. Yule commands the 1st Division in the 1st Corps. Uh, Sullivan, or Jackson commands the 1st Division in the 2nd Corps. Um, anyway, so W.H. Harmon's brigade already has M.J. Gardner's, which I think are, like, even better than the equivalent of the Springfield, or maybe that is the Confederate Springfield. In any event, no point in upgrading his unit. It's already 32 firepower. Uh, we have J.A. Campbell's of Burke's brigade, uh, which is currently using Palmetto smoothbores, which are reaching 42 smoothbores. We've got D.A. Langhorn of Fulkerson's brigade, also using 1842 smoothbores. 
and artillery under Crunchfield. Uh, additionally, out of the second corps, we have A. Elize, who is using Enfield rifled muskets, so very good weapons, no need to upgrade those. We've got Turner Ashby of the Ashby's Cavalry Brigade, are using manured carbines. Um, and then we've got W.C. Scott using reboard farmers' muskets of uh, Scott's Brigade. Additionally, we have Lusk's Battalion of Artillery, uh, which is using Napoleons, and we've got R. Taylor, which is using 1842 smoothbores, and we've got Isaiah Trimble using uh, Enfield rifled muskets. So those are the current sit setup or the current units right now. We obviously want to get those smoothbore guys upgraded to better weapons. Although the one interesting thing with the smoothbores is they're really good at hand to hand. Uh, the 1842 is a 91 hand to hand. That's better than anything else out there and that's because of the fact that they have buck and ball in their munitions all right so i think what we're going to do is we're going to focus on upgrading the units that currently are using the 1842 springfields or palmettos they're the same rifle one is just sort of a, a southern conversion of it um so the first unit with the 1842 palmettos is uh j.a campbell's brigade of 2041 men it's gonna cost almost all of our money to upgrade the, these guys to Enfield uh, rifled muskets. We could go with the Lorenz. That would be vastly cheaper, actually. Um, and the the firepower is not as good as the Enfield, but it's certainly better than the Palmetto. So we'll go ahead and do that at first, because we've got a couple of Lorenz rifled muskets. These are Austrian rifled muskets. The Enfield is a British version of uh, the British rifled musket. Um, and these Lorenzes are... I, th I like the Lorenz. I've got a bit of a soft spot for the Lorenz, but... I don't really know why. The quality on the Lorenz varied dramatically, um, historically anyway. Um, the alternative is the 1855 Smoo or Springfield, which is a rifled musket, um, and is slightly better. But well, let's go with the Lorenz. So if we get these guys the Lorenz, they immediately have 21 firepower. Big upgrade in terms of firepower, slight downgrade in terms of hand-to-hand. -hand. We still have two Lorenz rifled muskets left and $75,000. The next unit here is Fulkerson's Brigade of 1,400 men. If we go with them with the Lorenz, they have $32,000, so we'll have 43 left. Or we could go with the Enfield. We'll go with the Lorenz as well. That's going to bump their firepower up to 15. Um, and then if we... That's, so that's all the units in Thomas Stonewall Jackson's command. His division is now entirely armed with Lorenzes or better. If we move into Kidding's Corps... Who the hell are these guys? BF Kidding? Is that like, hey, we're kidding... We're kidding. Who's BF kidding? First Corps commander. Doesn't even give him a rank. Well, I guess it doesn't give him a rank either. Um, Eliza's brigade already has Enfield rifled muskets. Uh, Ashby has carbines. Uh, Scott has reboard farmers. So we'll move him. Let's see. Is it just Scott? Is he the only unit that needs to be upgraded? No, we've got two units. We've got Taylor and we've got Scott. Taylor is much larger. So let's actually upgrade him. We can't even afford it because he's so large. Wow. Um, can we afford upgrading him to the Texas Tyler? Not quite. He's such a big unit. I, I want to... Um, so we could do Scott for 20000 I guess we'll do that. We'll upgrade Scott. Uh, I guess we could go to the Enfield Rifle instead of the Lorenz. That would be a slightly better weapon. It would get him up to 17 firepower. Um... Although I like the the hit the uh, let's go with the we'll do that. So we've got twenty two thousand left. We're gonna put Scott with the Lorenz rifled musket. And is there anybody else we can do anything with? I don't want to get rid of these smooth these Napoleons. Those are good. We could upgrade him to reboard farmers, which are they are an upgrade. So it'll bring up to twenty two firepower, I guess. So Ty Taylor's the only brigade that doesn't have at least and uh, Lorenz rifled muskets. Um, part of me wonders, like, would we downgrade anybody? Would we downgrade Trimble to get a little bit more money to get uh, Scott a little bit better or Taylor a little bit better? Uh, but I probably not, right? Uh, Ashby, how much would Sharps cost? They'd cost seventeen thousand. Those are kind of expensive. Be a nice big upgrade for them. We could go with Blitzer Hall carbines, which would not be affordable either. So I think this is what we'll do. Um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll move forward. We also can change commanders too here by dismissing people, but I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, so we'll move forward. Purchase complete. 
Fictional Harper's Ferry, version 1. Stonewall Jackson, fresh from a major victory, chases the fleeing Federals to the town of Harper's Ferry. If Jackson can defeat the Union Army and take the town, he will strike a decisive blow to the morale of the North and panic Washington into recalling McClellan's forces to defend the Northern capital. So Thomas Stonewall Jackson versus Nathaniel Banks. This is a two-day battle. Looks like one of our first two-day battles. It's one out of 55 turns. Uh, it looks like units are deploying in battalions again. Our regiment sizes suck. Look at these, like 130 men, 160 men. Uh, unit morale is also pretty low. I don't know if that means we've just been like, they're exhausted maybe, similar to like the historical Antietam campaign where they're exhausted and, and kind of tired. Uh, we've got a lot of troops though. We've got a lot of regiments on the field here, all across the field, all coming in from all directions, even some troops coming in from the north. Um, nobody across the river, though. There are forts on the other side of the river. Historically, Confederates came in on the other side of the river in the Battle of uh, Harper's Ferry in the Antietam campaign. But this is a little bit different. We're just directly chasing the Federals. So I would not be surprised if they've got heavy artillery in these forts. Um, they're going to have troops along these heights here to the west of Harper's Ferry. I guess the question is where their, their positions start. I don't. Do I have any cavalry to scout these guys out? I don't. I don't see any horsemen on the field yet. I guess the other question also is, do I have any um, reinforcements that are going to be coming up? Oh, we do have cavalry in the north here. It's probably Ashby's brigade. Yep. With this hall breach. There's some. I don't understand how some of the regiments get get Richmond sharps. Like it's randomly. It's like, well, you have the brigade equipped with this. Therefore, there's some variants in there. I don't quite understand that. Reinforcement report. Doesn't look like there's any reinforcements on the way, so what we have is what we get. Uh, we'll go ahead and save the game. Okay. So I'm going to bring the cavalry down this road, down here from the north. And we're just going to kind of scout out what's in front of us. So we're going to have two regiments go down this road here on the right. We'll have a regiment go here a little bit further down the right flank. We also do have some horse artillery. Cavalry leader number zero. Yeah, dude, you rock. <laughs> He's cavalry leader number zero. Be afraid. Be very afraid. And we've got some horse artillery as well. Uh, meanwhile, other troops are coming down this road here. It is a two-day battle. I guess I'm curious if the Union gets reinforcements. There's not very much of a write-up for the fictional Harper's Ferry scenario. Which would be good to know, like, are we expecting large numbers of reinforcements? There could be, right? The Federals could send a large number of reinforcements in from Washington or something. Um, I'd rather concentrate my forces as much as I can. Maybe I'll concentrate these two columns here north near Unionsville. And then they can advance south together. Although there's a, there's a crossroads down here. I don't really know, but I've got like three columns. I don't know. This is a huge battle in terms of the number of units. It's not a huge battle in terms of the number of men. The, the manpower is relatively low, but it's basically probably like 17,000 men or whatever. I guess it's Jackson's entire core, historical core anyway. Jackson's obviously just a division commander in this particular scenario. Um, Richard Ewell, commander of the 1st Division of the 2nd Corps, Major General Richard Ewell. And then further south, we've got General Jackson. Let's try and take these heights. It looks like there's probably some federal troops down here around Halltown. So we've got dismounted enemy cavalry here with their hull breach weapons. All right, so we're going to try and move, I guess, early. Ewell's division is probably this northern division. So I'm going to link up Ewell's division. I'm going to move these guys north. I'm going to try and move in two columns, sort of maybe flanking both the federal positions. I'm not quite sure. We'll concentrate two large columns of troops. This column will move north to be concentrated with these guys who are coming south toward the heights over here. This is one of those rare battles in the game where you've got a lot of real estate to work with. And you've got a lot of units, but you've also got a bit of time because it is a two-day battle. All right, so we're going to bring this over here. We'll set Jackson up here. We're going to move these guys forward. I guess the other question is how much artillery do the Federals have? Because that could be a game changer if they've got a ton of artillery. A fair number of our troops here in the south are actually artillery too. So the infantry feels a little bit more grouped toward the north. 
The artillery feels a little bit more grouped toward the south. Let's not do that. Okay, these guys are moving up this way. The enemy could also have troops along the river over here. So they could, it does look like they probably have a defensive, I'm guessing they have a defensive position along this ridge here. But all the troops in the north are so far away from that ridge that the troops here in the south are a little bit exposed. Until some no, of those nor troops way up north come down. So I think that about does it for the first turn here. I don't know if I have any other units. Uh, yeah, I don't think I do. All right, so let's go ahead and see what happens here. Fifth New York Cavalry is entrenched. These guys have to be a bit like an outpost. They've got really good firepower. They've got decent weapons, hull breaches. So I guess we're going to see if we can get the 27th Virginia around their flank. We'll try and cut these guys off. I'd like to destroy them if we can. It doesn't look like there's any other federal troops in the immediate vicinity, though. They can probably ride out of here through those woods. They are cavalry, after all. I am taking a risk that some of my regiments will get attacked here in column formation. But I would like to destroy every federal unit that I can. Meanwhile, this artillery is moving up on open fields, so they're not going to be able to move as far because they're not in roads, which is weird. All right, so these guys are coming down here. Now that I think about it, I really should concentrate as many of my troops in one spot as I can and just try and overwhelm the Federals. Much as we can. We'll get these horsemen to scout out a little bit ahead of Early's troops. Or Yule's troops, sorry, not Early. This is definitely going to be a multi-part video here, though. Okay... We'll move these guys forward toward Unionville, which I think is where I'm going to concentrate my northern infantry. Won't necessarily deploy them, though. I just want to get them in one spot, so if we run into the Federals, we can have a fair shot against them. Bring an artillery up. I wonder if we march these guys along the railway, how they'd march. All right, they're going to move to Unionville... Then they're going to move south, down toward Deck Shop, and down toward the main federal position, which I think is over this way. So they're going to take the main road south from Unionville. Because they're heading in that direction, I think I'm actually going to march these guys along the railway cut. And I think I'm going to move these guys along this sort of country road. Oh, country road, oh, country road. No, that's not the song. Um, okay, Zora Church. All right. I just want to know how many men the Federals have in this battle. This is, I think this is going to be a tough one. But I think that does it for that turn. Let's move forward again. Federals did move, they did attack, they did inflict some pretty heavy losses on our defenders there. But the good news is they didn't mount up and they didn't ride away. So that's very good news for us, actually, because what it allows us to do is close the trap. Yes, the 27th Virginia took a fair number of casualties, but now these federal horsemen are doomed. Because they basically can't do anything now. They're surrounded, they have 28 firepower, there are 595 of them, 590 of them. Uh, but they are now going to be subjected to attacks from overwhelming forces. So the first thing we're going to attack is, is the 23rd Virginia. Their morale and their organization is a little bit down, but they've got Enfield rifles. They've got 44 firepower. They're attacking dismounted cavalry, and the defenders lose 39 men to 24 attackers. So that's a good result. Uh, now we're going to attack with the 1st Virginia Irish Battalion. 26 firepower, 538 men, U.S. 1855 Springfield rifles. And the enemy surrenders. So just like that, two quick attacks, and an enemy regiment is gone. A regiment of cavalry, the outriders of their forces, and the Confederates are advancing on halt. So good news there for us, a good result. 27th Virginia was attacked. Um, we'll move them forward here, and we'll start moving toward Halltown. 
So we just destroyed an enemy picket formation. I'm assuming it's a picket formation anyway. And now we're going to be moving toward Halltown and into these woods where I'm assuming the Federals have strong positions on this ridgeline. I want to get artillery up on these hills uh, because I'm assuming that we can pound the enemy positions from there. Historically, the Confederates pounded Harper's Ferry from the other side of the river with the dominating heights on the other side of the river. I don't think we can do that. It would take us too long to get around to the rear. So I think we're going to go more for a frontal assault, which is perhaps not the wisest move, but it's what we're going to try. Okay, so Richard Yule has detected a 1st Connecticut Cavalry Battalion. He's acting as a little bit of our scout. He'll fall back here. We'll see what the Federals do here with these guys, if these guys are going to ride back to some defensive positions or if they're going to ride forward to try and take that objective. I'm 100% hoping that they ride forward and try and take that objective, and maybe we can destroy more Federal Cavalry of D. Thompson's 1st Connecticut Cavalry Battalion. That's another large federal uh, battalion here. Over 600 men with manured carbines. Those are good, good weapons. Meanwhile, we're going to move these guys along the railway to try and flank them a little bit. Move our artillery up. And then... Oh, by the way, I need to tur turn the movies off. I know that was something that some of you guys complained about in the last video here. Move these guys up. Unionville, and then we've got our cavalry here riding down from the north. These guys can actually kind of be our outriders, actually. We're detecting an enemy cavalry formation to our right flank. More enemy horsemen all out here on the flank. These guys are the 8th New York. These guys were at Gettysburg, historically. I think they were part of uh, Buford's division. I remember playing with them in... Uh, Sid Meier's Gettysburg. They were one of the really large cavalry regiments you have. So I just moved my cavalry to the right of my infantry line to kind of protect the flank a little bit. We'll see if the enemy tries to go for... Uh, lim Again, this should protect the flank of these troops that are in column formation. So we're starting to run into the enemy. Uh, next unit is plus. So let's try that. I think everybody else has moved. They have. Let's go ahead and save the game. Save as Harper's Ferry turn three. All right. All right, so let's move forward here to the next turn. Whoa, where the hell are they riding to? They just rode right past my front line. What do you think you're doing, dude? Let's get out ahead of you. Gonna try and block their path. A little bit. Anyway. See if we can surround these guys and destroy them as well. So our cavalry was actually able to outride them a little bit, get out ahead of them, and now I think they're not gonna have much of a choice but to engage us. They they have one hex that they could escape. But it depends, right? So, like, if the if the uh, AI sees, oh, there's a there's a mount there's a uh, column formation infantry unit here, let's attack. Then they're gonna just get stuck there, and we're gonna surround and destroy them, just like we did the last cavalry unit. If they see, oh, I've got one or hex either direction to escape, uh, then they might be better off. So we'll see. Uh, let's move this artillery off the road. Meanwhile, the first West Virginia cavalry's out here. There's a lot of federal, a lot of large federal cavalry units here in this particular fight. Meanwhile, Ewell's forces are going to form a battle line up here, as enemy horsemen appear to be pretty strong. Now, if this is any indication of the amount of infantry regiments that they have and the strength of those infantry regiments we may be in a bit of trouble but we'll see all right and then to the south there's a union artillery unit here moving up toward hall town let's try and get our holy shit enemy infantry in column how did we not spot them Jeez. 
Are, are these woods that effective at shielding their movements? Man, this is like Lee at Gettysburg. Like, I didn't even know they're there. Okay. I mean, I was on the frickin' heights. You would have thought I would have seen something. Uh, maybe I should be using my uh, Commander Jackson here as a scout. In any event. We'll see if these troops here at Halltown try and escape or not. It'll be interesting. It looks like they are advancing out a little bit towards some of these objectives here, a little bit further beyond the ridge line. So they may be a little bit scattered. Granted, I'm a little bit scattered coming up too here, but there's a regiment here of 3rd West Virginia with reboard farmers' muskets that we have troops adjacent to. If they realize their rear is threatened, they may pull back. If they don't, we might have a chance to trap another isolated enemy regiment. We'll see. Um, I think that's probably going to do it for this turn, though. Everybody else has kind of already moved. Yeah. Uh, let's take a real quick look here. So with that one battle that we fought against, the individual cavalry regiment uh, that was dismounted, we lost 33 men wounded, 17 killed, so a total of 50 men. The enemy lost 59 men, plus 536 captured, an additional 13,489 weapons cost captured, supply captured of 1,500. Victory points are strongly in favor of the Union because they hold the victory objectives for the most part. But we have captured some important victory points already, so that may start to turn. It, the ending time is May 28th of, uh, at 1900 hours when the time, when the, the sun goes down, it is eight in the morning right now on May 27th. So still about 51 turns left. Probably got about one more, two more turns maybe in this recording. All right, so the enemy cavalry did try and move around our flank and did attack our limbered up infantry doing a horrific amount of damage. 70 casualties versus 11 attackers lost. That's pretty devastating. Another cavalry regiment attacked here, the 8th Louisiana, that was in column formation 59 to 6, and drove them back. The 8th New York compounds that and charges again 16 to 1. That didn't quite go as I had hoped. So the enemy, the 8th Louisiana, is not in any shape to move. But the good news is, despite wrecking one of our infantry regiments, Sort of the silver lining of all of that is that we now have two enemy cavalry units surrounded, at least temporarily. They can attack the 8th Louisiana and certainly escape. But we can also attack them. So I think the first thing we're going to do here is charge the 8th New York, use morale points to do it, and cripple them maybe? 68 to 52, that was a bloody fight. Unfortunately, we didn't uh, we didn't defeat them. Now, the Wheats Louisiana Tigers Battalion here can try and attack the 8th as well. We can't charge them, but we can at least attack them. We didn't force them to surrender, but they are pretty bloodied now at this point. So now, um, actually, let's do this. Let's move the 8th Louisiana back. Then we'll slide the 7th Virginia Cavalry in. We can move these guys down. So now we've got them surrounded. Now the 1st West Virginia could try and attack its way out of here. They might be able to charge out the 7th Louisiana or one of the other regiments. But at least the 8th New York is probably trapped. And we now have two large federal, federal cavalry regiments here in a rough spot, I think. So that's the situation over here. We'll see what happens next turn. It was a pretty rough handling, though, that he gave that they gave our troops. If we take a look at the casualties, we gained some of that back, but almost 250 casualties now to 150 Union, uh, ignoring the, the surrendered troops. This is going to be a very rough fight for us. Meanwhile, they, they pretty badly beat up Rice's uh, New Market Artillery, as well as the 15th Louisiana, with the 1st Connecticut Cavalry Battalion. Move these guys... Uh, we have surrounded the 1st Connecticut, but I think we can only attack with one of our units here. 44th Virginia is going to attack them to try and wear them down a little bit, so maybe they can't break out. We did win that fight, per se. Uh, let's try pulling the infantry back. Alright, so we now have this cavalry regiment here surrounded. 
But they could bring up the first Maine, or Maryland, which is in pretty good shape too. At least our artillery's unlumbered now. So we'll see. I'm going to pull Yule back, make him a little bit less exposed. The Federals are really coming on strong here in this particular turn. Meanwhile, the Federal Infantry, or the 3rd West Virginia, did form up for battle. So they didn't actually retreat, so, which admittedly is a little bit surprising. Um, undo. I can't get back to Halltown. So I just surrendered the hex in the rear. That may let them escape. No, sir. Crap. All right, so they may escape now. Meanwhile, the 4th U.S. Artillery here is Napoleon's. It's a very large battery. I'm going to charge them, mainly to just try and eliminate them as a threat here right away. We, we badly crippled them at that attack. This artillery is going to start going up the hill over here to get into firing positions. Man, this terrain is not suitable to rapid movements. I'm a little bit worried that the 3rd West Virginia is going to recognize the danger and withdraw. I hope they don't, uh, but they may. We'll see. It'd be nice to get one of their infantry regiments. be nice to get these three cavalry regiments here that we have all surrounded now, though. And we'll see what happens here. We've got one more turn in us, and then that's probably it for this video here. So just the beginning of the battle of uh, Harper's Ferry here. So enemy artillery here. They do bombard us. They did pull those troops back. Their cavalry came up, so they're forming a bit of a battle line here near Halltown. We can see another infantry regiment coming up. 21st West Virginia's hit real hard there. Attack the enemy artillery here. Right, so we drove them back. Meanwhile, these enemy units are strong. But we... Uh, I don't know. Um, move these guys... Move these... Oh, shit. More troops coming down this road? I'm trying to, to defeat these guys in detail by hitting them early, hitting them hard. The problem is they're a lot stronger than I am. I think this battle is going to go very poorly. We'll see what happens here. If they want to attack here, that might make them a little bit easier to destroy. But my troops are exhausted and relatively weak. So... Yeah, we'll see what happens here. Uh, meanwhile, in the north, at least the cavalry units uh, are still surrounded. So we forced the first Connecticut to surrender without even charging. So that was a good result. The 8th New York, we also forced to surrender. Just one more attack is all it took. The 1st West Virginia, we're going to charge here with Ashby and force them to surrender. So, multiple enemy cavalry regiments, three regiments surrendered. If we go back up here, we can see we've lost almost 400 men in casualties to their 270 or so. But over 2,000 Federals have been forced to surrender already. I'm guessing that's only the tip of the iceberg based on what we're seeing here down in the south, but it's still a good result for us so far. The question, I think, now is whether we can get the rest of our troops far enough south in time, because we're really going to need to mount these guys up. I mean, I can try and, like, get in around these enemy batteries and see if we can get a, this enemy artillery destroyed. 
Like, I mean, okay, so this battery, this West Virginia battery here of uh, ordnance rifles should be a goner. But it's just a question of, like, I gotta get these infantry south now to try and support the troops that are being engaged here in the south. And I don't really know what I'm up against here. But I'm guessing it's something strong. And I don't have a good line of sight on anything here. The the trees are a little bit difficult. The enemy units are strong. They're very large. They're, uh, they're a bit of a challenge here. I'm trying to race south here. It looks like this guy, 43 firepower, reboard farms. Almost 1,000 men in this regiment here. He's headed south. Let's undo that. Let's just rest the 8th Louisiana. They've already been wrecked. The 7th Louisiana. I mean, I'm just going to mount these guys back up, and I'm going to try and force march them south. Maybe the strategy for this battle would have been to go in unified, like not even move, don't even move toward the Federals until no, sir. you get everybody on the sort of far edge of the map all united. That might have been the better strategy. But um, alas, it's not what I did. Um... All right. Let's save. Actually, let's do one more turn. We'll see what the Federals do here. They continue attacking inward from Halltown. They've got cavalry in our rear, which I didn't even see. They attack Jackson. Then they break out north at Halltown. So they've got a shit ton of cavalry all over the field. Not as much infantry as I guess I would expect, but a lot of cavalry. So, no, sir. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right, they can't attack now. All right, so just forced the first New York to surrender. Another enemy unit surrendered. Need to figure out how to surround these guys. No. So I drove the cavalry back, at least. So we can't surround this unit of enemy horse. I should I probably could have surrounded them. Maybe I can rout them. I'll have to unlumber these guys. So we're battering that regiment of units. Okay, so we forced one more unit to surrender. We also are really battering the 3rd West Virginia here. 84th Pennsylvania Reserves are still very strong and in our front. But at least we salvaged a little bit of the situation there. Enemy horse probably can't attack. So hopefully, maybe they're just trying to escape. I don't, I don't know. We'll dig these guys in. They're pretty battered. Meanwhile, this artillery battalion is surrounded. We'll charge them with cavalry. I'm surprised we didn't force them to surrender. But in any event, two cavalry charges is all the West Virginia battery can take, and they're forced to surrender. Um... Our 
marching these troops south here. Trying to get into the rear of the first main. We'll form these guys up in line. Again, we're scattered, but so is the enemy, kind of. All right, so I'll keep them formed up. All right, so we've got a line of battle here. We'll move these troops that are marching south in behind the cavalry line to hopefully keep them safe from any enemy attack. Again, trying to join up with our other troops. This is a two-day battle, so I'm... I'm going to guess the Union are going to get a bunch of reinforcements, and they're probably stronger than what we can see right now. Eddie, we aren't man. getting any, so I think the key is destroying them in detail. In any event, I'd love to get another cavalry unit to force to surrender. We have seen almost no infantry. So that's probably going to do it here. So overall, some pretty devastating attacks. Several of our regiments are ravaged. It feels like we're very weak. At the same time, we have engaged several enemy units and destroyed them in detail. Over 2,600 federal uh, prisoners. Uh, only about 400, just shy of 400 federal casualties to over 420 of our casualties in terms of killed or wounded. But the men surrendered vastly flipped the equation. Um, the victory points controlled by us, pretty strong because of where the battle's being fought. Already 78,000 weapon cost captured. This could be a real boon for us or it could be a bit of a disaster. But we'll see. Um, we'll see how this plays out. Man, these guys can't do anything over here. Can they hit these guys? Well, they already shot, didn't they? Yeah. In any event, maybe we'll get this uh, first Vermont here, another 520 prisoners. It would be great. Or if we could uh, get the third West Virginia here, 439 prisoners. In any event, I'm just, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out what happens. But that is for next time. Until next time, though, thank you once again for tuning in. And this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.